The catchphrase for this training is going to be magnetic hygiene. When you're using a compass or the True Pulse 360, the weak link absolutely will always be the compass. There will also be a magnetic interference guide that will be available to you. This explains a lot of the things that cause us the difficulty in doing compass measurements. This is both when you're using it as an offset or in the missing line function. Very important things that in magnetic hygiene, things that uh, are bad are stuff like these. Heavy watches, bracelets, if you have heavy glasses, these are bad. And also if you have solid pens, survey nails, if you have a cell phone, any of these type of items can cause magnetic interference when they're within six inches of your True Pulse 360. As we start getting farther out in the 18 inch range, uh, if we have GPS antennas, if you have a two-way radio, if you have a uh, metal clipboard, all of these things we have to be very aware of. If we're within six feet, we need to make certain that we're not in a very large ferrous environment, such as uh, standing uh, on top of or near a fire hydrant or on top of a manhole or something that could cause it interference. If you're directly under power lines, if you're seated on an ATV, all of these type of things can cause interference. If you are within 15 feet is when we're really concerned about vehicles. We cannot shoot a True Pulse 360 from a vehicle and expect an accurate azimuth reading. So if you're in a truck or a car, you do need to step out of the vehicle and up to 10 to 15 feet away, and that's what the vehicle turned off. If it's still running, we need to extend that even farther. There are also electric boxes, uh, power lines. All of these things can cause interference with the compass module. Uh, as we're getting closer to outside of 30 feet, if we get into heavy machinery or you know, a very large metal building, all of these things can cause interference. So we need to be aware that the compass will always be our weak link. Very powerful tool, but we have to make certain we know how we are using it. Another tip that comes up are inaccurate height readings. One of the most common, since if this was to fall out of a vehicle or uh, off somebody's desk, that the tilt sensor could be affected. It's very easy to do the tilt sensor calibration. Once you've done it, you'll be very comfortable in repeating it even in the field. The compass calibration is also, once you're comfortable with it, it's a very, very straightforward process. I do a check before I get into my vehicle once a week. There's a power pole in my parking lot that I shoot that I happen to know is 30 feet tall. If it's within 30 feet, I'm pretty happy. I also know that that power pole is directly north from where I park. This makes it very easy in making certain that my azimuth is correct. If it seems to be off, another check tool for your azimuth would be walk about halfway towards your target and shoot your azimuth again. It should stay on that same heading. What I'll also do at that point is I turn around and I'll shoot to the back of my vehicle. That azimuth should be about 180 degrees off. If you're not comfortable with those, calibrate the compass. Compass should also be calibrated when you change the batteries. This is something that is very simple and again will help you with best possible measurements.